Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Camber Castle. Camber Castle in England was constructed at the request of Henry VIII in 1512. You remember Henry VIII with all the wives? It was designed as an innovative defensive structure, and because Henry VIII was obsessed with gunpowder, it was also one of the first English castles to use cannons in its defense. These are called Henrician castles, or device forts, and were the precursors to the larger, more robust military fortresses that came in later centuries. Camber Castle is special because it was uniquely designed by the Italian engineer Stefan von Haschenberg. It may be an English castle, but anyone with a keen eye for architecture can spot its Italian influences. It was meant to be a port castle where the English fleet could hide behind. Unfortunately, no ship ever had the chance to use the castle as a sanctuary because by the time it was completed in 1544, the castle's advanced design was already obsolete. It was only used as a military fortress until the 1550s, then was completely abandoned in 1637. One of the major issues was that by the 1600s, the sea had receded quite a bit. The sea level had fallen so much that the cannons that were installed in the fortress were no longer able to fire at invading ships. It was totally useless and became nothing but a fancy picnic area in the 18th and 19th centuries. And today, it is just a shell of its former glory. Number 9. Lake Shawnee. The Lake Shawnee Amusement Park is a place of great terror, an abandoned theme park with a daunting past. In fact, the story of the park goes all the way back to the 18th century. A man named Mitchell Clay brought his family to West Virginia in the late 1700s. Disaster struck in 1783 when a Native American tribe killed two of his children, even burning one at the stake. The farmer retaliated with help from the other settlers, and they tracked down the Native Americans and massacred massacred them all. Fast forward to 1920, someone got the bright idea to build a theme park on this same piece of property. The park was up and running by 1929, complete with children's swings, a water slide, a dance hall for teenagers, and a speakeasy for the adults. There was even a pond and a swimming hole, and you could rent a canoe for the day and paddle around. But the terror never ended. A little girl died on one of the swings, a boy drowned in the pond, and by 1966, half a dozen visitors had had been killed in mysterious accidents. The attraction was abandoned, and it's still abandoned to this very day. People only found out in the 1980s that the park was built over the remains of a Native American burial ground, but that might explain why the place seemed to be cursed. Number 8. Cultist Voodoo Temple Evidence of sinister activity was recently discovered by a couple of workers that were cleaning the inside of an abandoned Colorado tool shed. The shed was filled with human remains, skeletons, masks, broken animal horns, and other items that seemed to suggest it had been used as a voodoo temple for practitioners of the occult. This disturbing sight was made by the cleaners, who were sent in to prepare the deserted property to be sold. The widow who lived there had moved out several months ago, and so the land was being put up for sale. And even though the woman had been living there, she hadn't stepped foot inside the tool shed for over 15 years since her husband left her and moved to Panama. She had no idea what was going on in there, but apparently it was being used by some kind of cult. The cleaners discovered a machete, a mysterious scepter, a disgusting brown wig, some antlers, and a mannequin dressed in purple robes, but it was the human remains that made them call the police. Officers uncovered parts of a human skull and some leg bones, all of which belonged to an unidentified man. Last we heard, no one has any real knowledge of what kind of ominous activity took place here, but judging by everything that's been found, the shed had been turned into the scene of some kind of ritual slaughter. Either that, or the human bones had been purchased on the internet to be used in a voodoo ritual. Number 7. Grain Tower Grain Tower was built in the 19th century as a gun tower to protect the dockyards of Sheerness and Chatham. These dockyards can be found in Kent in the United Kingdom. The full name of this abandoned place is the Grain Tower Battery, constructed on the shores of the River Thames after the brutal Napoleonic Wars. At this particular spot, there is no way to move up the river without passing by the tower. This made it a great strategic defensive point
point just in case the French tried to send their ships along the English coast to attack the shipbuilding yards. But it never really ended up being used for much. It was built on a tidal sandbank, meaning it was only accessible during low tide by walking along the exposed causeway. Because of its weird position and the severe weather here, construction took nearly 10 years. And when it was finally completed, it was way over budget. The tower consisted of three stories, stood 42 feet tall, with its walls over 12 feet thick. It was intended to be a barracks for the soldiers, with about 20 men inside watching over the river. But like so many things that were built in the 19th century, it was out of date soon after completion. A new type of gun had just come into existence, rendering all the guns installed inside the tower useless. There was talk to modernize the tower, but it would have cost too much money. So it was abandoned until 1915, when new guns were installed to deal with German torpedo boats. It became important again in World War II, but after the last war, it was decommissioned. By 1956, it was a forgotten ruin. Number 6. The Cursed Superyacht In 1976, a superyacht was built for an American industrialist named Roy Carver. The yacht was designed by Arthur de Fever and Doug Sharp, a pair of renowned naval architects. The design was so complicated that Carver never actually took possession of the yacht. He went and bought himself a different one because he was sick of waiting. And then he died from a heart attack in 1981. His original yacht was eventually sold to the Sultan of Saba in Malaysia, then passed on to another rich Malaysian, and then was purchased in 1999 and shipped to South Africa. Once there, it was to be extensively repaired and refitted. The issue was that the new owner apparently got bored and never made the necessary payments. The project was halted and the boat was left abandoned. It then sat neglected and cursed for 20 years in the Cape Town Harbor. It became part of the landscape, a forgotten ship that no one seemed able to hold on to. Even now, the ship's just sitting in limbo, half taken apart with little left except its steel hull and aluminum superstructure. Number 5. The Navajo National Monument The Navajo National Monument isn't just one abandoned place. The National Monument is made up of a series of ancient dwellings that were abandoned centuries ago by the mysterious ancestral Puebloan people in Arizona. There are three major settlements here overlooking the Betatakan Canyon system, along with some smaller villages spread across the desert, which was once the Anasazi homeland. The Anasazi, also known as the Puebloans, were an ancient culture that lived all throughout Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. We know that their cities emerged sometime around the 12th century, or about 800 years ago. They established a massive population here in the dusty red canyons of the south, and developed a complicated network of roads and paths connecting upwards of 100 communities. However, they all mysteriously vanished without a trace. The three main abandoned centers here are Keat Steel, Betatakin, and the Inscription House. Each major population center was constructed using the natural alcoves of the huge sandstone cliffs. The Anasazi built their homes in the shadows of these alcoves, constructing rudimentary houses from sandstone blocks and mud. Each small settlement could contain anywhere from 80 to about 150 people. The real mystery is why these places were abandoned. Based on climatic evidence, it's probable that the region suffered a major drought starting around the year 1299. It's likely that they ran out of water, that the crops stopped growing, and they had no choice but to push south. The Anasazi probably migrated into what would become the Aztec territory of Mexico. Do you believe that Anasazi migrated, or do you think it was something else that made them vanish into thin air? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. The Belle Isle Nature Zoo The Belle Isle Nature Zoo in Detroit is a sad and abandoned park sitting next to a polluted river. Belle Isle itself is an extremely popular summer destination for thousands of people in Detroit, people who flock to what little natural options they have for picnics and swimming. But outside the main tourist area, down an almost invisible overgrown path, there is an abandoned children's zoo from the 20th century. That was when Belle Isle was the home of the Detroit Zoo. People could come to visit tiger cubs, elephants, monkeys, and all kinds of other exotic animals. In 1956, the main zoo moved to Royal Oak. This left the infrastructure at Belle Isle useless, so it became a children's zoo. In the 1980s, the zoo changed its name to Safariland, and in June of that same year, a bear escaped, swam across the Detroit River, and fled into the Canadian wilderness. 
By 2002, the zoo wasn't making enough money to maintain itself. There was no funding, and so they were forced to shut down. But because nobody seems interested in the property, nothing has ever been done with it. The state of Michigan has no plans of restoring the zoo. And so, all the old animal enclosures are still rotting away in this forbidden part of the island and have been for over 15 years. Number 3. The Canada Village Nestled in the southern Chinese province of Kaiping is the abandoned Canada Village. Its story is one of the most fascinating of any abandoned village in the world. Construction here began in 1923 by Chinese nationals who just returned from Canada. This large group of people had been part of the industrial boom in Canada in the early 20th century and took what money they had made back to China with them. The pioneers purchased the land, built fantastic mansions inspired by European architecture, and created a whole village. These were huge houses with balconies and strong, thick walls. Plus, the whole village was protected by a five-story watchtower. The village thrived like any remote Chinese village up until the 1940s. That was when things started to go downhill. By the early 1950s, most of the residents of the village had migrated back to Canada. So it was originally built by people who returned from Canada, but 20 years later, they all decided to go back. They abandoned their properties, moved to the north, and the whole village was left deserted. In 2007, Canada Village was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 2. Kaya Koi Kaya Koi is a creepy abandoned ghost town in Turkey. It's been desolate and without human life since 1923. These days, it's a popular destination for tourists looking for haunted stone houses. The village was once home to roughly 10,000 people a mixture of Muslims and Greek Orthodox Christians that lived in a remarkably harmonious community. The village came into existence around the 14th century, and it remained as a peaceful town up until the Greco-Turkish War of 1919. By the time the war was finished in 1923, the town was empty. The reason is kind of complex. During the war, the Greeks and the Turks decided that they would exchange Muslim and Christian citizens so that each country could have one major religion. In other words, each nation would be strictly Christian or strictly Muslim. The Greeks took back all their Orthodox citizens, and the Muslims stayed in Turkey. The result was that the village of Kaya Koi was abandoned pretty much overnight. 6,000 Christians marched out of town and migrated to Greece, and so everyone else left too. Ever since, the place has been a neglected ruin. Number 1. Forgotten South Carolina The colonial Dorchester State historic site dates back to 1697. That was when this South Carolina town, called Dorchester, was a bustling hub of activity. Today, it's simply a 325-acre historic site that's been abandoned since the Revolutionary War. But over 300 years ago, this was a shining jewel of colonial South Carolina. The few ruins that remain include an old brick bell tower from the St. George's Anglican Church, an overgrown cemetery with at least 20 burial plots, and an old log shipping wharf. This city was one of the very first places settled by the Puritan descendants known as Congregationalists. They sailed from Massachusetts to Carolina and started this trading town on their own. Everything was going swell until the Revolutionary War started in 1775. By the time it ended in 1783, everyone had been pushed out of the town. It was abandoned and the whole place became overgrown by forest. It was lost and completely forgotten. It wasn't until recently that the archaeological ruins were found, and the place was turned into a protected site. The entire village had been hidden in the South Carolina woods for centuries, something you typically expect to see somewhere deep in the Amazon, not in the United States. Thanks for watching! Which of these mysterious abandoned places would you love to visit yourself? Or have you already? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you later! Bye!